It's here. It's fucking here, dude. The new Shadow Priest. Almost. No, really. There are a bunch of very impactful and important reworks to Void Form. Devouring Plague is back and a whole bunch of talents were scrapped and replaced. This new priest is freaking bonkers, man. Ugh. So let's uh, dig in. As always, we playtest and theorycraft the shit out of each spec on our stream at twitch.tv slash marcelliononline. We stream five days a week and dabble into live as well with viewer dungeons and raids, mostly Saturdays. Join us for duo cam streams on Wednesdays where you figure out I am not Marcellian, nor Marcellian's son, brother, lover, or any of that stuff. I know. <sighs> Mind blowing. With that out of the way, we already had an alpha coverage of Shadow Priest just before all of this was added and with the current version of the beta, we lost access to legendary powers and conduits to properly test since no more vendors. You will still get details on them, but no actual demonstration of them in action. Um, sad day. But now for Shadow, briefly going over what you get baseline cause there's more juicy bits waiting. Desperate Prayer is back to help you with another defensive. This is very welcome. Shadow's main defensive, Dispersion, is very strong but also makes you unable to attack and Vampiric Embrace doesn't prevent you from taking damage to be an actual defensive. As such, Prayer will give you more freedom and survivability without making you choose between doing damage and rolling the dice to see if your healer can keep you up or take 5 and chill while the boys and gals rock those DPS meters. Mind Sooth is back for some reason. Hmm, flavor, I guess? That's cool. Couldn't really find a use for it, but hey. Shadow War Death is baseline now with the cooldown reduced by haste. It deals a decent chunk of damage to the target, which is increased by 175% if the target is below 20% HP. If the target doesn't die from it, you also take that damage to your face. You can also talent into it to make it stronger. Power Infusion is also back and baseline learned at level 58, or relearned, cause you know, you had it before. This gives your target a 25% haste buff. You can and probably will put it on yourself, but the whispers and begging will come back from those DPS hoes asking you to use it on them. Fundamentally, this is an almost bloodlust on yourself to compensate the lack of haste you would get from Void Form. Speaking of which, Void Form has been changed. It's now a 1.5 minute cooldown with a relatively short duration. It requires 90 insanity to activate and the rest of its mechanics function the same. This is one of the biggest changes to the playstyle where you don't feel like you are endlessly ramping with a 30 something seconds to a minute window of prepping your rotation before you actually pop your shit in the second Void Form window. That's gone now along with the insanity depletion mechanic. And to replace all of this, Devouring Plague is the other insanity consumer. It costs 50 insanity to use and deals heavy, heavy damage, both initially and over its 6 second duration. As a design, this is incredibly good. Might be a bit overtuned, but that's likely to be addressed eventually. There are still some tweaks to this playstyle that need to be addressed, but more on this later. Since our last Shadow video, Boon of the Ascended from the Bastion Covenant has actually been buffed to make your Ascended Blast, that's replacing Mind Flay, to also generate insanity. That coupled with the Ascended Nova you gain access to makes this one of the funnest and most satisfying buttons to press. You essentially deal decent single target or AoE damage and healing and build Ascendant stacks that deal damage and heal at the end of its duration, based on how many stacks you accumulated. I still wish the AoE part would generate insanity even if it's a lot less than the blast so you don't feel like your overall damage will suffer. But other than that, 10 points to Kyrian for their awesome ability. Maldraxxus also comes with a pretty dope AoE ability in Unholy Nova. You Nova around you healing allies and debuffing enemies with a strong dot. Anyone dealing damage to them will get healed. 
And this seems to proc on damage event so far, so mind seer like abilities can heal for quite a bit. Not to mention that this falls into the Vampiric Embrace Utility Kit, where you help your group heal themselves. Might actually be pretty good in high end competitive content, and we are seeing this trend where a bunch of Covenant abilities give hybrid DPSers the option to heal their group. Can this reduce the amount of healers you need for stuff? Or maybe enable them to be more aggressive? Hmm, who knows? You might have seen or heard of the previous Ardenwald Night Fae Covenant ability. Now it's Fae Guardians. Although more straightforward to use, now seems it has less utility for your group than before, but not by a lot. The Wrathful Fairy generates 6 insanity or 1% mana every time you apply Shadow or Pain. So it kind of only works for you this time. The Guardian one reduces damage taken by the target of your Power Word Shield. And the Benevolent Fairy increases the cooldown recovery rate by 100% on your shadow mend target. Right now the friendly bonuses seem to stay active for as long as the covenant ability remains active, which is 20 seconds. 100% cooldown recovery rate for your group members is a nice utility, same with the damage reduction, while the insanity generation is more of a fire and forget and kind of only works for you. This can have awesome applications and increase the chance people would want a Night Fae Priest in their group. Lastly, Mind Games! or why you would join the Venthyr of Revendreth. This is not a straightforward ability to use efficiently, but sounds like it's maybe the least boring? Looks like a PvP one to me, but can also work for group utility, again. When the enemy deals damage, they heal their target, you or the tank, and when they attempt to heal themselves, they damage themselves, and when these events occur, you get a chunk of insanity. It's a short 45 second cooldown with a 1.5 second cast time. This damage scaling remains to be seen, but the resource generation can be well worth it. With a caveat that we will explore a bit later. The resource bit, of course. Okay, here we go! You lost a bunch of talent, only to be replaced by new ones, so let's see what changed for you going into Shadowlands. Death and Madness is on the first row and adds an insanity generation effect to Shadow Ward Death if its target dies within 6 seconds. You'll gain 73 insanity over 4 seconds and the cooldown will be reset. This can potentially be incredible in heavy AoE fights where there are a lot of low HP mobs. The issue is the consistency. How often can you exploit the insanity and cooldown reset effects compared to the other two options here? Uh, Fortress of the Mind is the same, with Unfurling Darkness being a new talent. After you cast Vampiric Touch, your next Vamp Touch will be instant and deal a lot of upfront damage. This effect has an internal 15 second cooldown, but the buff has unlimited duration. So you can Vamp Touch now and in 15 seconds cast it again as an instant and that also gives you an instant one more time, so kind of like two back to back. Not sure if this is intended and I feel it's a nice effect that gives you some control and versatility on how you use this in AoE scenarios. Probably one of the best new additions to the AoE kit is Searing Nightmare. Holy shit. What this beautiful gem does is while you are channeling Mind Flay or Mind Seer, you spend 30 insanity on this to apply Shadow Word Pain and deal AoE damage to everything. If the target hit already has Shadow Word Pain on them, then the damage is doubled and right now that double damage on one target deals more damage than a full Mind Blast. This transforms your damage profile in AoE into an on-demand burst. You need a bit of insanity to spam it, but this is a game changer. It seems to deal more damage than trying to maintain multiple Devouring Plagues up. It also depends on the scaling. This is one ability I do not want to see nerfed right now even though I can admit Devouring Plague is a bit overtuned. Another tool for AoE that you get is Psychic Link, down on the level 40 row. This makes your Mind Blast deal 60% of its damage to every target affected by Vampiric Touch. On paper this sounds very good, but I have yet to test it properly and have a good feel of it. Sounds like something that will be better in late game, maybe one or two patches away when you'll have a lot more haste and fight shit that lasts for I don't know, long enough to, for you to cast 3 to 4 Mind Blasts? Playing it with Misery and Unfurling Darkness seems like a cool way to maximize the damage if you build your shadow on a Mind Blast path 
with conduits and legendaries, because there will be some of them. <laughs> Yay for versatility! Some talents being moved around, you will notice Damnation taking a place on the level 45 row. This is a 45 second cooldown instant cast spell that applies Pain, Vamp Touch and Devouring Plague on your target. This is the type of mechanic that priests have been asking for. Something that can eat some of that ramp time and give you some on-demand upfront damage. Although it's still done. Right now, casting this also activates Unfurling Darkness and with Misery you can fully dot 3 targets in less than 3 GCDs worth of rotation time. That is pretty cool and I can only see this getting better as the expansion progresses. Not sure if it will remain competitive since down the line, if you get to a point where you can keep up multiple Devouring Plagues, Void Torrent might be a thing. On the last row, Ancient Madness is a new talent that will give your Void form a 30% crit chance buff on you for 15 seconds that decays each second. This looks like, again, upfront power that you don't build towards anymore. With Void Form being a 1.5 minute cooldown, the value of this is questionable and needs proper M+, and Ray testing. The other two options have been altered slightly. Legacy of the Void makes Void Form not have a duration and return to the Insanity Decaying mechanic. It also gives you a 5% more damage in Void Form. This felt incredibly underwhelming to use and maybe it could see play if it reduced the cooldown of Void Form as well? Unless you will play Night Fey and have that as a cooldown reduction source. Surrender to Madness right now doesn't seem to fit the playstyle even if its cooldown has been reduced. It's still linked to your target dying, though I'm not sure what the final version of it will be. Right now, Surrender to Madness lasts 25 seconds, but activates an instant Void Form that lasts 15 seconds. If the target dies, you lose the Surrender to Madness debuff effect and apparently the bonus insanity generation as well, but keep the Void form. This feels a bit all over the place and I'm not sure if the devs are forcing this into the game with no real way of making it worth it or they just want this to be an AoE thing, which is weird because with losing the lingering insanity and back to back Void forms, there's no real reason you would find this useful. Once your target dies, that's it. You can't use Surrender to Madness to ramp to some insane haystacks since they go away once your Void Form fades. And you will at most have one more Void Form to use from your base kit. With Lingering Insanity gone, pretty much both this and Legacy of the Void feel incredibly meh. But... So far, every class has 4 generic legendaries and 4 specific spec ones. Like Twins of the Sun Priestess, which will make Power Infusion give its buff effect to you as well when casted on an ally. This offsets the stigma around it and essentially increases your group's overall performance by kind of forcing you to not use it on yourself. There are also a bunch of legendary powers that are universal for all classes. So for right now, let's just look at something more shadow themed. You might remember Eternal Call of the Void from the Legion Artifact. Well, it's back and Mindflay will spawn tentacles with a chance to channel their own Mindflays for 15 seconds, generating 3 insanity per tick. There are a bunch of ifs here. If the Mindflay they channel scales just like yours, then this could be crazy. A 15 second Mindflay is bonkers and it could help with single target damage. Of course, if that Mindflay is also hasted, it will be even better. Ifs. Pain Breaker Psalm gives Shadow War Death the effect of eating 6 seconds of your Shadow War Pain and Vampiric Touch duration on the target to deal that damage instantly and generate 10 insanity. This is sketchy. Baking more damage that scales with haste into your Shadow War Death will make it easier to get killing blows but can also turn into overkill wasting potential DPS. Making it not overkill would mean Casting it on cooldown and you will get that much damage to your face, so would that be good? Kind of offset by Desperate Prayer, but if taking that much damage to the face can be dealt with, you could be looking at a Shadow War Death build that can hit like a truck with really good gear. Maybe this can be good if it also removes the self damage effect. Now that would be a legendary. Or instead, add a cooldown reset? Hmm. Shadow Flame Prism reduces the cooldown and increases the damage of your Shadow Fiend and subsequently your Mindbender. I can see the value of this becoming a thing if it will make either Fiend or Bender 
align with a small burst window. Maybe Void Form can align with every other Mindbender or every Shadow Fiend. They won't perfectly align though, so you would have to hold on to one or the other. Although Mindbender being on a 24 second cooldown could become a more active part of your rotation. Talbadar's stratagem seems to work amazingly with Damnation and maybe even Psychic Link. If the Mind Blast damage put into Psychic Link is snapped at the point of the cast, then it will also increase the AoE damage by 30% as well. This is the kind of mechanic I really enjoy, setting up a bunch of abilities for one big moment. With the loss of all that ramp, I can see you casting a Vampiric Touch with Misery on a target, putting it instantly with Unfurling Darkest on a second target and casting Damnation on a third, followed by a Mega Mind Blast that will hit hard on all three targets. Nice. Over the last couple of builds for the beta, the Soulbinds have been changed, making some of what you will see here potentially different than what you will have on live. To that end, I will cover some broader aspects of Soulbinds and Conduits. What you need to know is that Soulbinds act as sub-talent trees with passive bonuses. Certain bonuses are actually empty, leaving room for you to put your desired Conduits in to build the passives that you want. There are three types of Conduits, Endurance, focused on defensives, finesse which are oriented towards utility and potency which focus on damage and healing. For the most DPS outputs and gains you want potency conduits but not all soulbind builds will give you access to the most amount of potency options. Pelagos from the Kyrian is an exception where you can get all three potency conduits unlocked on the same path you would get both the mastery and versatility buffs which consists of the throughput path. Let go of the past and combat meditation are the first and last traits you would unlock and Pelagos is the first soulbind you will unlock also, so yay! Other options are towards survivability, file of serenity buffs and effects and so on, which can end up being very important based on your preferences. Playa, for instance, will unlock two potency slots available if you are willing to sacrifice the only crit buff she has to give you pointed courage if Shadow will love crit as much as it does in BFA, of course. Mechanicos is the same with Hammer of Genesis that gives haste if you are willing to forego one of the three potency slots. But, you know, haste. Choices being impactful can be hit or miss. Fundamentally, I love it. Having an obvious cookie cutter build for best DPS will make the build bland, while sacrificing one to get the other seems like a better way to play an RPG. The pattern continues with the other Soulbinds from the other Covenants. Plaguey's Preemptive Strike from Marilith, the Maldraxxus Soulbind, gives you some upfront damage that can work with stuff like Damnation and Ancient Madness. While Emony has all sorts of bonuses, Gnashing Chompers give you a potential 5% haste buff to maintain in what looks like dungeons. Heimrir's Arsenal Marrowed Gemstone can give you some crazy crit windows to pair up with void forms and stuff like that. Again, if you forego one of the three potency conduits you would be using. Nia from the Night Fae has a few options that can be good. One focused on interrupting, which is ugh for Shadow, cause you know. But another one, Nia's tools burst that can help and damage your target among the mastery buff from Grove Invigration can be pretty sweet. Um, which is questionable, cause mastery. Did Shadow ever use Mastery? Hmm. Dreamweaver has a versatility buff in the Social Butterfly trait, for which you would sack a potency trait, but you also get a cheat death in Pot and the regardless of your build. So yay to spamming Shadow or Death? Korain comes with First Strike, an option that will give you a 10% crit chance for 10 seconds if you hit a target before it hits you. In organized content, this will pretty much happen all the time, and if you stagger your DOT application in AoE, you can potentially have a decent uptime on this thing. If you choose to go with Venthyr though, Nadia might be your best bet with Thrill Seeker on the last row, giving you an almost mini bloodlust as you stay in combat. That and the fact that you don't need to sack potency conduits for it could make this the best DPS option from Venthyr. On paper, Theotar is a more versatile soulbind with the mastery buff out of the way but with wasteland propriety that will give you versatility always welcome and that's on the last row. 
If you want to go with General Draven for a more tanky approach, you can still get superior tactics that buffs you with a 10% crit chance for 10 seconds after you interrupt the cast. This having an internal cooldown of 30 seconds makes Shadow lose out less than other classes and maybe with Last Word Talented you can have some decent uptime on this. You heard me say potency here, potency there. Currently there are 4 potency conduits with only 3 max available slots for any Soulbind to use. Mind Devourer is one of them with a 5% damage buff to Mind Blast and a 10% chance to make Devouring Plague free when you cast Mind Blast. This seems like it will work in AoE especially with the Mind Blast fuels we talked about previously. Rabid Shadows gives Shadow Fiend more damage and attack speed. Obviously pair this up with the respective legendary and maybe even Mindbender as a talent and boom! A 24 second cooldown jacked up pet so you can feel like a hunter when the padding fucks up and your pet gets stuck. <laughs> Dissonant Echoes gives your Void Bolt a 5% chance to reset its own cooldown. This might make Legacy of the Void actually playable and could be the extend your void form as much as possible solution for you if you enjoy the long as shit void form windows. Shimmering Apparitions comes in to solve your non critics of Shadow Ward Pain to spawn apparitions. This seems counterintuitive or could be good for a non crit haste mastery build. Or haste verse? Hmm. I am saying all of this because conduits have ranks that they scale with and these bonuses will go up as you get higher and higher ranks of these specific conduits, 15 in total right now. It's very nice that Blizzard is giving Shadow so much attention, especially after the feedback the community has been putting out. The direction in which it's going is great and with a few more tweaks you might have a whole different experience playing Shadow in Shadowlands. So far the AoE seems to be the best thing going for the spec. In single target with crappy gear you end up generating way more insanity than you can spend on Devouring Plague in single target which needs some attention. Either make Devouring Plague stack or make its dot effect and duration hasted since a similar problem afflicts balanced reads with Starfall as well. And you would think you could play Legacy of the Void to introduce a new source of insanity consumption but that's once every minute and a half. And even then Void form seems to do less damage than Devouring Plague. Which is kind of bad because I did say Devouring Plague is overtuned but nerf it too much and shadow output will actually be pretty poor so it's a narrow path to walk on for the devs. You should 100% check the Warcraft Priest Discord channel for updates. A lot of the top Shadow Priests have been putting out some theory crafting and tests and any future updates coming to the spec will most likely end up there first. And of course a special thank you to our Patreons once again for supporting this type of content, this and of course our news video, our streams and more recently our podcast which you should check because we already have a couple of episodes out with more to come a lot of interesting guests to check and see what they have to say about you know being a content creator and a community figure 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 god damn it and our podcast can be found on spotify and other platforms so thank you very much for watching the video hope you liked it and we'll see you in the next one